Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 5.1, Division Patterns with Decimals. The essential question for this lesson is, how can patterns help you place a decimal point in a quotient? Now, go ahead and open up in your GoMath workbooks to lesson 5.1, found on page 101, and let's get started. Now, before we begin solving problems in this lesson, I want to talk to you guys about some of the division patterns with decimals that we're going to encounter. In this first section, we're going to talk about patterns based on the number of zeros in our divisor. So what I noticed first is this. In the first problem, we have 147 being divided by 1. Well, I know that in a 1, there are 0 zeros. So that means my number is going to stay the same. So 147 divided by 1 is still going to be 147. Now, for the next problem, we see 147 being divided by 10. Well, in the number 10, I know there is 1 0. So what that means is I'm going to move that decimal one place to the left. Our next problem shows 147 divided by 100. In the number 100, there are two zeros. So what that means is I'm now going to move the decimal two places to the left. So our answer turns out to be 1 and 47 hundredths. In the next problem, we see 147 being divided by 1,000. In the number 1,000, I know that there are three zeros. So what that means is I'm going to move the decimal three places to the left. So 1, 2, 3, and my answer turns out to be 147 thousandths. Now, in the next section that you see right here, our pattern is going to be based on the exponent that we see in the divisor. So for this first problem, we have 97 and 2 tenths divided by the 0 power of 10. Well, what I know is the exponent there is a 0. So that means I'm not going to move my decimal at all. It's going to stay in place. So 97 and 2 tenths divided by the 0 power of 10 is still going to be 97 and 2 tenths. Now, for the next problem, we see 97 and 2 tenths being divided by the first power of 10. My exponent here is a 1. So that means I'm going to move the decimal one place to the left. So my answer now turns out to be 9 and 72 hundredths. In the last problem, we have 97 and 2 tenths being divided by the second power of 10. Well, what I know is my exponent here is a 2. So that means I'm going to need to move my decimal two places to the left. So we're going to move once, twice, and now my answer turns out to be 972 thousandths. Now, these two examples reinforce our key concept that says, as you divide by increasing powers of 10, the decimal point moves one place to the left for each increasing power of 10. Now, let's put this knowledge into practice. Now, let's take a look at question number two. Our job here is to complete the pattern, and what I notice is in question two that each one of my divisors has exponents. I have the zero power of 10, the first power of 10, the second power of 10, and the third power of 10. So I'm gonna use what I know about patterns with exponents to help me complete this problem. Now, for the first part, I have 179 being divided by the zero power of 10. My exponent here is a zero. So what that means is, I don't need to move my decimal at all. So when I write my answer down, I'm going to write down that 179 divided by the 0 power of 10 equals 179. Now, take a look at the next part in this pattern. We have 179 being divided by the first power of 10. Well, my exponent here is a 1. So what that means is, I'm going to write down the number 179 and I'm going to start from the end, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to move my decimal over one place to the left. So my answer here turns out to be 17 and 9 tenths. Now, for the next part of the problem, I have 179 being divided by the second power of 10. My exponent here is a 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write down my 179, and this time, I have to move my decimal two places to the left because my exponent here is a 2. So I'm going to come to the end, and I'm going to move that decimal over once, twice. So my answer now turns out to be 1 and 79 hundredths. Now, take a look at the last part in this pattern. We have 179 being divided by the third power of 10. Well, in this part of the problem, my exponent is a 3. And that 3 says that I need to move my decimal to the left three times. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down my 179 and I'm going to move that decimal over one, two, three times to the left. So my answer turns out to be 
179 thousandths. Because once again, as you divide by increasing powers of 10, the decimal point moves one place to the left for each increasing power of 10. Now, let's take a look at question number three together. Once again, what I notice is this. In this problem, my divisors all have exponents. So I have the zero power of 10, I have the first power of 10, and I have the second power of 10. Well, once again, I'm gonna use my knowledge of exponents to help me solve this problem when I use the pattern. So we're going to start out, and our first part of the problem is 87 and 5 tenths divided by the zero power of 10. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to write down 87 and 5 tenths. So we have our 87 and 5 tenths. And because my first exponent is a zero, I don't need to move the decimal at all. So 87 and 5 tenths divided by the zero power of 10 is still going to give me 87 and 5 tenths. Because remember, the zero power of 10 also equals the whole number 1. And if you divide 87 and 5 tenths by 1, you still get 87 and 5 tenths. Now, take a look at the second part in this problem. We have 87 and 5 tenths divided by the first power of 10. Well, what I know is this time my exponent is a 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down my 87 and 5 tenths. And because my exponent is a 1, that means I'm going to need to move my decimal one place to the left. So we're now going to move the decimal one place to the left. So our answer now turns out to be 8 and 75 hundredths. Now, let's take a look at the third part in this pattern. We have 87 and 5 tenths being divided by the second power of 10. Well, what I know here is my exponent is now a 2. So what that means is I'm going to have to move the decimal point two places to the left. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go ahead and write down my 87 and 5 tenths. And what I'm going to have to do is, once again, because my exponent is a 2, is I'm going to move that decimal two places to the left. So here's once, twice, and my decimal now ends up in front of the 8. So what that means is my answer turns out to be 875 thousandths. Because once again, as you do divide by increasing powers of 10, what happens is the decimal point moves one place to the left for each increasing power of 10. Now, let's take a look at question number 4 together. When I look at question number 4, what I notice about my pattern is this. My divisors are a 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. So this time I'm going to base my pattern on the number of zeros that are in my powers of 10. So let's go ahead and start here. With the first part of our pattern, it says 124 divided by 1. Well, I know that if I divide 124 by 1, I'm still going to get 124. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write down the number 124. And what I also know is I don't have to move the decimal because there are no zeros behind the 1. So if there are no zeros, my decimal point stays in the same place. So once again, 124 divided by 1 is still going to be 124. Now in the next part of our pattern, we see 124 being divided by 10. Well, I know that in the number 10, there is one zero. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write down the number 124. And because there is one zero in the 10, I'm going to move my decimal point one place to the left. So we'll place our decimal behind the 4 to begin with, and we're going to move it one place to the left. So our answer now turns out to be 12 and 4 tenths. Now, take a look at the next part in our pattern. We have 124 being divided by 100. Well, I know that in the number 100, there are 1, 2 zeros. So what that means is, I'm going to have to move my decimal point two places to the left. So I'm going to go ahead and write down my 124 again. And starting from the end behind the 4, I'm now going to move the decimal over 1, 2 places to the left. So the decimal now falls in between my 1 and my 2. So my quotient now turns out to be 1 and 24 hundredths. Now, let's look at the last part in our pattern. We have 124 being divided by 1,000. Well, I know that in the number 1,000, there are 1, 2, three zeros. So what that means is I'm going to have to move my decimal point over three places to the left. So I'm going to start out by once again writing my 124, place my decimal behind the 4 to begin with, and we're going to move it over one, two, three places to the left. So the decimal now falls in front of the 1. 
So my answer, my quotient here, turns out to be 124 thousandths. Because once again, as you divide by increasing powers of 10, what happens is the decimal point moves one place to the left for each increasing power of 10. Now, let's take a look at question number 7 together. Once again, our job is to complete the pattern, and what I notice is this. We're dividing by a 1, a 10, and a 100. So once again, I'm going to base my pattern on the number of zeros in the divisor. So for the first part in this pattern, we have 51 and 8 tenths being divided by a 1. Well, what I know is there's no zero behind the 1. So if there's no zero, that means my decimal point does not have to move. It's going to stay in the same place. So I'm going to write down my answer, my quotient, as 51 and 8 tenths. Because once again, what I know is 51 and 8 tenths divided by 1 is still going to be 51 and 8 tenths. Now, take a look at the second part in our pattern. We have 51 and 8 tenths being divided by 10. Well, in a 10, there is one zero. So what that means is I'm going to have to move my decimal point one place to the left. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write down my 51 and 8 tenths. And I'm going to move that decimal point one place to the left so that it now falls in between the 5 and the 1. So our answer now turns out to be 5 and 18 hundredths. Now, in the last part of our pattern, we have 51 and 8 tenths being divided by 100. Well, I know in the number 100 there are 1, 2 zeros. So what that means is I'm going to have to move the decimal point two places to the left. So I'm going to once again write down my 51 and 8 tenths. And I'm going to move that decimal point over 1, 2 places to the left. So the decimal now falls in front of the 5. So my quotient turns out to be 500 18 thousandths. Because once again, as you divide by increasing powers of 10, what happens is the decimal point moves one place to the left for each increasing power of 10. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. It's our first real world problem solving question and it says, the local cafe uses 510 cups of mixed vegetables to make 1,000 quarts of beef barley soup. Each quart of soup contains the same amount of vegetables how many cups of vegetables are in each quart of soup? Well, what I know is this. I know that the local cafe uses 510 cups of mixed vegetables, and that's to make 1,000 quarts of beef barley soup. They also say that each quart of soup contains the same amount of vegetables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 510 cups of mixed vegetables, so I have my 510, and I'm going to divide that by the 1,000 quarts of beef barley soup. So we end up with 510 being divided by 1,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down my 510. And I'm going to place my decimal at the end of the number to begin with. And once again, because there are three zeros in 1,000, 1, 2, 3, I'm going to move that decimal point three places to the left. So here's 1 two, three places to the left, and now my decimal ends up in front of the five. So what I end up with is I have 510 thousandths of a cup as my answer. Now remember, I can also write an equivalent decimal here. If I just take off the zero at the end, I can also write that as 51 hundredths of a cup, and that would turn out to be my answer for this problem. Now, let's take a look at question number 11. It's our second real-world problem-solving question, and it says, The same cafe uses 18 and 5 tenths cups of flour to make 100 servings of pancakes. How many cups of flour are in one serving of pancakes? So what I know is this. I know that we're using, or that cafe uses, 18 and 5 tenths cups of flour, and that's to make 100 servings of the pancakes. And the question is, how many cups of flour are in one serving of the pancakes? So we're going to take our 18 and 5 tenths cups, and we're going to be dividing that by the 100 servings. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to write down my 18 and 5 tenths. Now, let's look back at our number 100. In the number 100, there are one, two zeros. So what that means is, I'm going to have to move my decimal point two places to the left. So I'm going to move it over once, twice, and the decimal now falls in front of the 1. So what I have is, I end up with an answer of 185 thousandths 
cups of flour that are in one serving of pancakes. And that turns out to be our answer for this problem. Now, let's take a look at our homework questions for tonight. I would like you to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found on page 102 in your GoMath workbook. Don't forget to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're a novice? I'm just starting to learn this and I don't really understand it. Do you feel like you're an apprentice? I'm starting to get it, but I still need some coaching. Do you feel like you're a practitioner? I can do it by myself, but sometimes I might get stuck. Or do you feel like an expert? I understand it well, and I could teach it to someone else. Once again, don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete question 1 and question 2, as well as numbers 3 through 6 found in your GoMath workbook on page 102. Have a great evening, and we look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.